Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is an incredible leader, and he's the head coach of the Damien football team. He is Coach Eddie Klineski, and today we are going beyond football. Hey, Coach Eddie, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me, Rusty. Really excited about it. Now, Coach Eddie, I want to, you know, get the updates about, you know, what is Damien doing right now about the, you know, coronavirus situation? Okay, um, you know, we, we've we've kind of been the for, at the forefront of this uh, virus. Uh, you know, our president, Brian Walsh, kind of been, you know, he's been involved in a lot of these things um, in the past, and uh, it's been it's been pretty pretty good for. He's kind of you know implemented a lot of things as far as extending, you know, our spring break. We we, we extended it a lot uh, way before the public schools did, and um, you know, we're we're not going back to school. And we're extending it even farther, and even prior to that, um, he had our teachers and our faculty basically have some courses during the time we were in school, um, like professional development right, to get us prepared for to, to put our classes online. And, you know, even this week, because he extended the uh, spring break to this week, our faculty members are meeting um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, um, kind of getting ready to go um, live online on Monday. And, um, you know, our kids are going to be are really fortunate uh, because we do have one-to-one -one technology and we're able to to do it for our kids and um you know we're really prepared for it and uh you know if it extends even longer we're we're ready for all that to go down and um you know our kids are you know um prepared at home with their with their laptops and you know there are schoology apps and a whole bunch of other apps that we have ready you know once we get into that so i think we're fully prepared and um you know our administration did a great job of getting our faculty and staff ready for this you know the long haul well, that's great to hear because, you know, I'm a I'm a proud Damien alumni and, and so are you. And uh, I want to ask you, Coach Eddie, about your early years growing up in Hawaii, if you can share share with me about that. For sure. Um, you know, uh, I grew up out in uh, Crestview, IPO Gentry side. And, um, you know, just living in kind of I wouldn't say it's a rough neighborhood, but it's a it's not a place where um, it, things came easy. Um, we, we played a lot outside you know, riding our bicycles, you know, running down the street, playing football on, on the concrete, you know, kind of getting into a lot of mischief out there. But um, it was a great learning experience for me. Nowadays, kids are, uh, you know, on their phone, cell phone, social media, those types of things. We never even had access to that, you know, until we got a little bit older. But, um, you know, it, it, you know, just created a lot of character in, in me, just, you know, being able to have fun and learning the hard way, I guess, you know, going out there, you know, falling off my bike, you know, falling down on the street, getting scratches and those types of things. And, um, you know, just those little hard not life lessons, you know, learning growing up on that side, it was, uh, it was, it, it created a little toughness in me, you know, where, you know, if I, if I get hurt, it was something I just had to get up and walk away from, you know, put a bandaid on it, stitch it, whatever it was, uh, you know, you learn those tough, those hard knock life lessons. Nowadays, uh, kid might fall down, get a little scrape, they're calling the ambulance, you know, so the times have definitely changed, and, uh, you know, it, it was fun, you know, I attended Kanoalani Elementary School, you know, in YPO Gentry, um, and then I played, I went to Pearl City Highlands, um, you know, that, that was kind of our district, and, you know, from there ended up um, kind of, I wouldn't say I got recruited to Damien, but one of my uh, football coaches, who was a Pop Warner coach at the time, you know, ended up becoming the head coach um, on the JV at Damien and I was able to attend there they you know said hey you know we'd like you to come to play for us and I ended up going to Damien um, and then from there ended up at UH and uh, played ball at both Damien and at UH and so you know it was a great experience growing up my whole life I've been here in Hawaii and um, now I'm back where it all started you know yeah. back at Damien High School. No, I love it and Coach Eddie you know looking back what was the first job that you ever had that you got paid money for? Um, Going back, you know, I was a, a newspaper boy, you know, me and my brother. Um, I'm not, I don't even remember how we got the job, um, but somehow we ended up, you know, selling new newspapers on Sunday morning. We'd be, we'd get picked up in a van. It was weird, you know, like seven, eight kids get in a van. You 
you get dropped off at various spots, you know, along the route and, um, you know, basically walking down the middle of the street, selling Sunday papers and earning tips, you know, so it was kind of a, kind of a different experience. Um, they don't really do that anymore these days, but uh, it was fun for us. Um, you know, opened up, a, you know, checking my first checking account. I still have that same account to this day, you know, 30 years later. And it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of helped me along, you know, just experiencing, you know, how to earn money and do those things. But yeah, sending, you know, the star or it's actually, I think it was a star bulletin or something else back <laughs> then, but uh, that was the first job and it was a, uh, you know, a real fun job for us. Coach Eddie, let's talk about your family. I mean, you are completely surrounded by females. So can you tell me about your wife and your five daughters? <laughs> well, you know, my wife, she's a, she's a strong woman. She's a, you know, HPD officer. And, um, you know, without her, you know, we wouldn't be able to make this thing happen. You know, we, we, uh, we have five girls combined together and, uh, it's been, it's been a crazy, crazy time. And, um, you know, I love each and every one of them. And, uh, you know, without her, you know, being that rock, you know, it's, it's, we, we wouldn't be able to make it. And, um, it's been fun. I mean, we see the little one, she's, you know, uh, five years old, going to be six now trying to be 20 all of a sudden. And, uh, you know, we have our oldest one, Kayla, she's going to university of Hawaii. Um, she's actually trying to be a journalist too. Hopefully one day she'll be on the news, um, doing, you know, doing some newscasts and things like that. And, you know, they're all athletes, you know, Kayla played softball. She won a state championship, um, with pack five. Um, Damien didn't have a team at that time. Kayla, the second, I mean, Kyra, our second one, who's a senior this year, you know, played both volleyball and basketball. And um, that picture that you guys see there, she was actually, uh, she won a state championship for the girls volleyball for Damien, the first uh, state championship uh, for Damien High School. And uh, super proud of her. So really exciting. And um, we have the, you know, the other two, they play volleyball, basketball as well for Damien, eighth graders, Kenna and Cody. So, um, you know, we're athletic family and, you know, we're, we're really excited. And it's a, uh, it's never a dull moment, put it that way, in the household. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting during these, uh, this quarantine time with these guys. So, you know, <laughs> about it. Yeah. so Coach Eddie, let's talk about your time uh, playing, you know, football for Damien. Um, what, what did you like about playing football during your high school years? Um, well, as you guys, as you know, Damien... Um, back in the day is a little bit different. Um, obviously the number one thing that's changed is there's girls now. Back then there was, there was only boys. Um, totally different, totally different time, different place. And even since I've been there, Damien, I could see the difference from the boys to the girls, but it was just, it was a great experience for me. I mean, football was the, I learned so many things from football and that's why I kind of am where I am today. I have a lot of great friends you know, you know, playing on these teams, you know, I've never been in, you know, football to me. And I always tell my kids at this time, it's, you're never going to play a game like this. Football is so unique. You have to have so many things working together in order to be victorious. It's a lot of different than any other sport like basketball. You have five guys. Soccer can be a little bit comparable to it, but it's just a, it's a different kind of game. Um, you know, being able to bond with so many players and, you know, you, you, you create a lot of friendships and, you know, there's a lot of life lessons you can teach kids, you know, with the game of football and, uh, you know, playing Damon and, you know, being under coach Ina, who was very hard nosed uh, coach, you know, there was days where, you know, I wanted to walk off and quit because I got beat up on the field and, you know, <laughs> you, got, you got scolded and things like that. And, you know, you couldn't go home and tell your dad, hey, you know, this and this happened. He's like, well, what did you do? And you get lickings again, right? So <laughs> kind of a different kind of time. But um, I tell you right now, that's where definitely the toughness, I learned how to, how to, you know, be really tough and fight through things and um, just kind of don't give up type of attitude. And um, at the same time, Coach Ina, you know, he, he loved us. You know, he showed us so much love. If he's, you know, yelled at us or scolded us or punished us or disciplined us, whatever you want to call it, um, he, at, at the end of the day, at the end of practice, he would say, Hey, this is why I did it. You know? And that was huge for me. Not, you know, not, uh, being able to learn from that. That was awesome that you could, you could still be loved, but you had to go through these tough times, you know, and that's just a different way of showing you love. And, you know, as long as I was told that, Hey, this is the reason why then, you know, that was, that was great for me. And I learned a whole lot from him and, uh, I kind of try to instill that, you know, as, as I'm a coach now. What's, uh, what's one of the biggest things you learned uh, 
while you you were playing college football for University of Hawaii? Um, I think, you know, the biggest thing there is just, for me, my story going to UH was, um, it was, it was a rough one, you know, going, coming out of high school, I kind of, I, I think I was pretty good, uh, but I never really got recruited. I had one school looking at me and, you know, just very, at the very tail end of my senior year, my last game, we played against St. Louis and I had a good game and, you know, we we're playing at the old Cook Field and uh, the UH coaches happened, just so happened to be there. So they kind of like, um, what do you call it? They, they kind of recruited me late, but I didn't get a scholarship. So I had to walk on to the University of Hawaii. Um, I was treated really well, um, just like one of the scholarship guys. But I just, the thing that I, I think that I learned most and I take away from my experience there was just um, having to work through adversity, just being an undersized, smaller, slower kid um, coming out. Um, but I just, I just was mentally tough and I just had to fight through all these things. And, you know, for me, I just, had fun when I played when I played at UH and guys actually hated me because when I my freshman year when I was a when I was on the scout team I really I wasn't I don't know if I was trying hard or just was having fun because I love to play football but the guys on the first team would get so bad at me because I was I would beat them during a certain drill or do something good and make them look bad and they was just like you know it was kind of like, wow, what is this kid doing? So I would get hit. I, you know, things would happen to me in school, but I, I mean, at, in practice, but I didn't really care because I was having fun. And, and I never was intimidated, never, never ran behind the back of the line. I was always the first one up. And I just thought, I think the biggest thing for me was just, you know, being able to overcome all these stereotypes of being too small, being too short. You know, I worked, worked really, really hard, you know, for those whole, all those years in the off season to kind of get where I got to. And, um, I had to, I had to do it myself at, when I was at UH, you know, I just, I pushed through it, you know, fought through all of that, worked really hard and did my best to kind of be in shape and get bigger, stronger, faster every year. And um, that was a big thing that instilled to me that hard work and uh, dedication, knowing that, you know, if you do put in the time and you do put in the work that, you know, you will be able to, you know, accomplish the goals that you set for yourself. And, you know, I eventually got my scholarship, you know, two years later. And um, it was just due to all that hard work, you know, just training hard, not giving up on myself. Well, Coach Eddie, you know, I, I'm super proud of you because you graduated, Damien, like five years after I graduated. And then so, I, I mean, I was like watching you in football for Damien and at UH cheering for you. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, that you're the head coach for the Damien football team, what are, what are your priorities as head coach for the, for the boys? Um, you know, just like anybody else, I think uh, my priorities definitely, uh, you know, are are kind of focused on how how the kids' character is. You know, to me, football is just a, a an avenue for me to teach these kids life lessons. You know, how important working hard is, how important to, you know, take care of your family, how important it is to take care of your schoolwork, um, to do the things that really matter. You know, the little things. Um, you know, working hard in the weight room and nobody's nobody's there if you're by yourself are you going to do the same thing with, with when there's you know people there so um you know they got to take care of all these little things so when they leave us you know we make them we we kind of make them better people as a whole and uh that's kind of my main priority you know it's sometimes like i said we just we kind of we we get down on our kids and you know like you say discipline the kids a certain way but we don't just do it to do it to punish them. There's always a lesson learned. There's always something gained from it. You know, we don't just do things to do them. And um, I think the part is to make sure we we transform our kids from being maybe a self-centered person or selfish person and kind of make them a team player, make them better human beings, you know, well-rounded and just kind of hopefully we make them better than when we got them. And that's kind of my priority with our, with our kids. And, you know, I think we've done a pretty good job of doing that and, um, you can see it when you're, you know, you see kids five, 10 years later and you're like, hey, coach, uh, and they just talk to you about certain things. And remember, hey, I remember when you made us do this or that. And now I understand. And that's the huge thing for me is uh, seeing those kids understanding why we did what we did um, at that time when they didn't really understand what we were doing. So, you know, it's always that's that's a huge priority for me. And we continue to do that, me and uh, the rest of my coaching staff. I like hearing that, Coach Eddie. And Coach, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond football, okay? Yes, definitely. We'll be here. 
You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Coach Eddie Klineski. We will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Lillian Cumi, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor, and I have lots of uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is an incredible leader and head coach of the Damien football team. He is Coach Eddie Klineski, and today we are going beyond football. Hey, Coach Eddie, I want to ask you, why is St. Louis football so good with Cal Lee and Ron Lee over all of these years? Um. The, the, I just think the main thing with St. Louis is, first of all, the tradition that they've instilled from, you know, when Cal had his first stint way back in the day. I remember playing football against them and, uh, you know, they just they just have a tradition that's been built there for many, many years. You know, um, fathers, uncles, brothers, they all, they kind of understand, you know, what the expectation is there. And Cal Lee did a great job of, you know, winning championships a long time ago. And now that's a place where everybody wants to go. Um, that's that's kind of the baseline. Of course, they have you know a lot of talent there, but so do other schools. Um, but I just think the the difference with them is, like I said, that tradition. You know, people they don't go there expecting to win. They actually go to St. Louis and they train hard. They work the kids hard. And you know, I coached that at St. Louis um, one season with Darnell Arsenal, and uh, I under I learned that. And I in fact I had to. I had to kind of, for some of the kids that didn't understand that, I had to scold them and say, hey, you know, I played against St. Louis. I didn't go to St. Louis, but this is not how St. Louis men act, you know. So we had to instill that into some of the kids that kind of thought it was a, um, a right for them. You know, they still had to earn it like their their fathers and their uncles and their brothers did. And, uh, you know, that's what it is. It's basically an expectation of excellence of, you know, having a great brand of football and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have that same feeling, but I respect that program for what they've built. And you gotta, you gotta do something right in order to um, continue to win those championships. It's not always about talent, you know. It's about how you instill it. And you know, Coach Cowley actually coached me when I played for the Hawaiian Islanders, and um, he was a great coach. He always knew what to tell you. That's one thing I learned from him is that whenever there was a game or situation, Coach Cow would always tell each individual a certain thing and it's like oh wow I didn't think I didn't think about it that way and um you know he always knew the right things to say at the right moments and I think he's continuing to do that um now that he's back over there and uh obviously you know I think they won four champion state championships in a row and um that's that's unbelievable and considering he did it you know 20 years ago 30 years ago and he won 15 in a row so um you know it's it's a, a testament to his uh his legend and everything that he does for them and um you know, their tradition is is top notch for sure. Yeah, I like hearing that about how you said about tradition and, and it's really a culture and it's a high standard of excellence. And Coach Eddie, I wanna talk to you about my book, Beyond the Lines. Mm -hmm. I know you're a big fan of it and I wanna know what, what principles stood out to you uh, in the book. Well, I just think, um, you know, I, re I read through your book a few times and uh, just kind of going back to it. And a lot of, a lot of it resonates with me, you know, um, a lot, like you talk about character in there and, you know, you talk about a lot of the, the kids that you've, you've taught and the things that you, I'm sorry, you coached. And uh, I think character is a huge one for me. And like I mentioned earlier, that's something that I instill with our kids and just talking about the way they act, you know, things that they do will, will transform into, into their daily life. And uh, if we as a, 
as coaches can kind of instill good character. You know, you talk about your, your passion and your purpose um, and it, you know, it, it goes into performance, you know? So um, a lot of those things I, I really, you know, take to heart and I kind of been, I've been doing a lot of these things in the years that I've been coaching and gaming. And um, I just think that that character part of it is huge. Um, and you can kind of see when the kids kind of start to change and they understand that that's important um, it's going to transform them and it makes them better people and it makes them better players, makes them better teammates um, and things like that. And I think that's a huge one for me is, you know, make sure you create that, you know, create these kids the right way and make sure they understand what having good character means and, you know, be really honest and making sure they take care of that stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited, you know, for our kids when, when they come to our program, I've been, I always try to recruit kids, um, from our other sports and try to get them involved. And I, and that's the main thing for me is to, to kind of help them through my coaching style to help them with their, with their other sports. You know, for me, I want to like, this is the reason why I want you here. You know, you can help us win, but we also want to change your mindset, your mentality. And um, I always try to do my best to kind of make sure we, that's something we hit on with my, me and my coaching staff. And, you know, at the end of the day, if we don't win, at least we're teaching them how to be good young men and, you know, be good family members, brothers, sons, you know, things like that. And um, that that's the main thing. And, you know, your book kind of, there's a lot of examples of that, of, you know, a lot of your players and, you know, it's, uh, it's really good. Yeah, no, you're, and this, that's what you do for all of these years too, because in the book, I talk about, you know, character and how mm -hmm. we need to, you know, instill discipline because once they have self-discipline and team discipline, that leads to great habits. And then that mm -hmm. leads to winning. But ultimately, it's just to really be great people in society. Mm -hmm. No, I, I totally agree. And um, it, it basically gets you get gets you ready for the real life. I mean, they don't understand it at the time. They're like, why do I have to be here on time? You know, uh, why do you know, like that was another thing I meant to mention that earlier, too, was uh, my other coach at UH was if you're if you're like if we were five minutes early, we were late. You know what I mean? We needed to be there before, you know, the coach was there. And uh, that was a big thing for us. And, you know, in your book, you talked about your snake runs and those things and the things that they, you kind of, not punishment, but that was a discipline because they also could use it, you know, to, to better their game. And uh, we do the same thing. We have different ways of, um, you know, getting our kids and we don't even call it a uh, discipline anymore. I forget. I, we changed, we changed it. It used to be, it used to be, um, punishment but it, now it's uh, you know we're just we're doing extra conditioning work that's what it's called <laughs> you, sure that, you know we don't it, it's a more of a positive thing and you know we want to make sure they understand that they're not doing this for punishment but there's a purpose and there's a reason why you need to be on time because if you come late to work every single day you're gonna get fired eventually yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean things like that and if you do you know if you keep making these mistakes it's gonna it's gonna affect you you're gonna you're gonna affect your family you're not gonna have food on the table and things like that so you know just continuing to instill those um attributes to our kids and understanding that they need to do those things and um they're, they're gonna eventually figure it out down the road so that's that's the main thing for me coach eddie what are some of the challenges you face on your team um you know, for us, you know, there's there's a whole lot of different challenges. You know, a lot of um, some of our kids, I don't want to say they're they have a rough time. I should say sometimes because some families they have to work, they may have two jobs, so kids have to kind of do a lot of things on their own, whether they catch the bus. And it's not it's not easy to play football for me at Damien because there's times where we have kids that you know during the summertime they have to be here from you know two o'clock or two thirty for a team meeting weight training, summer program, those types of things. And they have to catch a bus, they have to get up to catch the bus, and then they have to catch the bus back home after we finish practice. So there's a lot of those things that our kids have to go through. So we have to kind of adjust to those guys and understand that um, we have to be, you know, uh, compassionate for them when they have these hard situations. So, um, you know, just kind of figuring out that we can't treat, we want to treat all our kids the same, but also understanding that there are some kids that actually go through a little bit more hardship just to be able to play football. And, um, you know, we want to do our best to, to kind of help our kids out and make it easy for all of them to kind of be fair. But um, I think that was a huge challenge. I think for me at the beginning, if, if you want to go back to the beginning of when I coached, I think the biggest 
thing was to change the culture. Like you talk about changing the culture, right? Um, at Damon, when I took over, we had went three seasons, I think, and never won a game. And prior to that, it was it was really bad. It was going downhill and we weren't winning. And, you know, they're talking about not having football. And, you know, the biggest thing for me was creating a culture of we can win football games. And it was a matter of getting better and toughening up. From the first year when I coached, we, w- we would be in a game in the first quarter down 7-0. And all of a sudden, the game's over. It's like, what are you guys talking about? So we changed the culture from that to being in a game. I remember, I want to say just maybe three years ago, we, we were playing against Iolani. We were down in the first quarter 28 points. It was 28-0. We ended up winning that same game in overtime, 35-28. So it's uh, it's amazing how we changed around just the mindset. You know, the mindset back then when we first started was, oh, we can't win this game. We're not going to win. We're not going to win, blah, 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 blah. We're going to give up. Compared to where it is now, it doesn't matter if the game's 7 0, 28 0. We're playing the same. We're not giving up. We're trying hard. And we're, we're, we always have a chance to win. Um, and the culture has went from accepting losing to expecting to win. So that was, to me, that's the biggest legacy for me when I leave is I left Damon saying, like, we're expecting to win football games and win championships, not, oh, we're, we're accepting losing that's not that's not good enough so that was to me that was the biggest change and i think that was one of the biggest obstacles i've overcome since i've been there i think i totally agree with you i remember when that was uh happening and it was so sad and that's why i always mm-hmm. say you know everything starts with the head coach or the ceo of a you know of a team mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. what you've been doing i mean you've been having such a great impact and coach eddie i always say that you know when you're playing sports or even in business you're either winning, losing, or tied, but your attitude Mm -hmm. and effort should always be awesome, right? Now, I want to ask you one more thing. How has your coaching style evolved through these years? Well, I think um, when I very, very first started, I kind of was the old school way. I want to say I was very hard on my kids. And I had super strict deadlines, super strict disciplinary plan in place. Um, and I kind of was, I was a stickler for it. And I didn't really think about what people were going through during their times. And I think that to me was the biggest change I made. And every year it's changed. I went from, if you missed one workout, this happened. You missed two days, this happened. If you miss this many days, you're suspended and you're off the team. Um, it was It was really harsh. It was really, you know, on paper and it was set and you know when I as I evolved as a coach I think I kind of adjusted to those times where it's like I I took into consideration family situations um you know it was a point where if people went on vacations it was like it was they didn't want to do it because they knew when they come back to football they're gonna have to do all this and this and this um I kind of eased up a little bit on it but the expectation is still there you know people still need to be a part of a part of um, what we're doing and um, coming there on time, but it was just, it's, it's kind of evolved in a sense where I'm, um, I wouldn't say more lenient, but more understanding of what's happening at home and the different types of things that they, you know, families plan and uh, just being able to adjust to that and, you know, being more open and, you know, accepting things when I can't do nothing about it. I don't want to force them into this, you know, round hole. And, uh, you know, that was my biggest thing. And uh, I think, I'm not softer by any means, but I'm just a little bit more understanding and I accept it, you know, when, especially when they, when it's the communications there and they tell me, Hey, we're going to do this. No problem. This is what you got to do. So that's the biggest change for me. And um, I think it's helped out. Um, my, my teams have grown from, because I've done that. We were able to get more baseball players, more basketball players, more volleyball players uh, to, to cross train because they're able to, kind of accommodate both of their sports during the summertime for sure coach eddie you are a great man and a great leader and i want to thank you for sharing your insights on the tv show today oh thank you Rusty. i really had a great time and um wish you the best of luck and we're looking forward to that next book oh i'm gonna get that second one to you shortly okay <laughs> okay awesome thank you and thank you for watching beyond the lines on think tech hawaii For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. 
and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Coach Eddie and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.